Now, if you happen to watch my previous video when I talk, when I spoke about the Apollo token and I explained how its algorithm works, so I'm gonna leave a link below if you haven't checked it out. The title is Can a token actually go up in value indefinitely? Now, I showed you through math and also an example, I have an example or several ones, so to speak, that this is actually correct for this type of token. This is not just hopium. And the math checks out. So, forward going forward from there i said that why would you actually buy the token because you're going to incur taxes when you do so so upon buying and selling so why would you buy it to begin with there's a reason for that and here it is so they also created a dApp called apollo galaxy that leverages the apollo token itself and its algorithm to create more revenue for the users who decide to enter the dApp itself so we're gonna go over how this one works and how is it different from everything else and by no means, this is a sure thing, right? Keep in mind, all of this is a risk, but this one is just different. Starting things off, let's go over the platform itself. So the user interface is not so complicated, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. But what I wanna tackle at the beginning is an overview of how this one works. And again, it's not so far-fetched from any ROI, that, any ROI DAP that you've been in or you've come across so far. But again, it has differences. And keep in mind that this also ties back to the original protocol, Daylight. And if you're not familiar with that, I have videos on this on the channel. You can check them out. Perhaps I'll, I'll leave links to these videos in the description below. But let's proceed now. All right. So first things first. Of course, to enter the DAP, you're going to need a native asset. In this case, it's the Apollo token. So I'm not going to go over how the Apollo token algorithm works because I've done that in my previous video. So you can go check it out. It's a mint and burn type of algorithm. So you exchange BUSD for Apollo back and forth. Now, you get your tokens. So you mint them with BUSD and you enter the DAP where you would earn from 1% up to 2.5%. So keep in mind that the basic daily ROI percentage is 1% and you can scale up to 2.5% by uh, the amount of referrals that you get into the system. So there's actually a table, very detailed table in the white paper. You can check it out later. We're not gonna go over that, but it starts off from, for example, you get 10 referrals, your 1% jumps to 1.25%, so on and so forth. So you need hundreds of referrals to get to that 2.5%, that's for sure. Now, a few things to note. One is, you're gonna get, so there's no actually max deposit, so you can deposit the amount of money that you wish to do in the uh, DAP itself, and you're gonna get three times 65 that amount, or 365%. So whatever you put in, that's how much you get out. You cannot compound your way to more. You can only accelerate your max payout. So the reach of your max payout can be accelerated through compounding. It cannot increase your initial deposit. So keep that in mind. It's a bit different, like I said, from the other ROI dApps, where if you compound, you add your deposit, so you earn more the next day, so on and so forth, meaning your max deposit or your max payout increases. That's not the case here. Now, jumping over to the tokenomics side, you have your basics on deposits, on compounds, transfers go into the to deposit as well. And there's also the referral that will get a percentage of whatever you deposit. Now, if you do choose a referral, you can, by the way, you can omit that part. You, you can just enter the, the, the staking platform without any referral. But if you choose to do so, that referral is going to get a percentage, 50% of the tax, which is 5% of 10%. And upon compounding, also, uh, there's a tax, like I mentioned, and this one is actually split between uh, the referral. Uh, so, sorry, no, scratch that. The referral walls is only available for the deposits at the beginning, but when you compound, the referral will not get anything. All right, just keep that in mind. But everything else, all the other taxes, the main one is actually going to head into the Apollo reward reserve so this one is actually a bit of a gray area for me i haven't uh, actually found any real documentation on this i assume it's gonna act as a tax vault so to speak but perhaps not because of how the apollo token works right 
it could be also a reserve that would be used later on to feed the TVL back in case, you know, it starts to shrink. And there's also the buyback and burn of the Dale token. A percentage will go to that. If you check my peer zero, you'll see that a lot of these taxes around Apollo and now, for example, the Apollo uh, ROI DAP, a portion of these taxes are also utilized to buy back and burn Dale, which also helps the full ecosystem going back to the original token. One more thing, there's something called the cosmic tax. Now, this one is actually something that is used to penalize early withdrawal, right? So when you enter the platform, in order to get to that 10% withdrawal tax, you have to wait nine weeks. So if you withdraw on the first week, you get charged 90%. So you have to wait for nine weeks to make your first withdrawal at 10%. But after that, whenever you withdraw, you're going to get charged 10%. So that's fine. You're not going to have to wait. Uh, you, meaning when you withdraw, it's not going to reset, so on and so forth. It will only reset when you deposit again. That's it. When you withdraw, it doesn't reset anymore. So keep that in mind. So like I said, you have more information in the white paper. If you want to actually go through specific percentages, you can do so here in regards to, for example, how much of the tax goes where, and also uh, in regards to your ROI, daily ROI percentage increasing based on the amount of referrals, so on and so forth. Now, a few things I want to add to this. I want to add the differences between this one and whatever there is on the market. Like that's what you care about the most, right? So why is this one different? So first things first, in regards to external revenue sources, which is something that many want to dabble in. And this was some sort of a buzzword or a headline that attracts you investors. And in general, most of these are just one-offs and some of the revenue generated would be used for buybacks, so on and so forth. But this is not the case here, right? So there are actually two sources that are currently generating revenues. So if you have the Orion DEX that does so through trading fees when people trade on the DEX and you have the actual launchpad. So the Apollo launchpad that also has fees associated with it that, that is counted as revenue. So a portion of all of these is gonna be put back into the TVL. Now, I cannot say much, but I know for a fact that there are currently revenues on the side that will be used in case something happens. So actual revenue sources currently in play. I'm not gonna mention anything that is coming up because again, unless something right now happens and is in ploy, I'm not gonna talk about it. So a portion of this is put back into Apollo to feed the Apollo Galaxy users. And keep in mind that, as you mentioned a bit earlier, there's a portion of the tax that will go back to buy and burn Dale, right? So when this happens, it's buying Dale on the Orion Dex and burning Dale on the Orion Dex, thus generating fees, thus adding more to the portion that will be sent to the Apollo TVL through the Apollo Galaxy DAP. So, you can see how the full circle operates here, right? So you can see that even though there is a portion that will be pulled out in BUSD to go to Dale, so buying Dale and burning it, but there's also another portion, uh, portion sorry, that will feed back revenue-wise. So it's, it's cool from that perspective. And I'm sure they want to add more uh, sources and I will cover them when this happens. So right now, this is what we have. And another major thing that separates this kinda from all the ROI dApps is linked to the major issues that ROI dApps face. One is inflation. Because you have more obligations, you need to get more tokens to pay out those obligations. And two, because you have more obligations, you're gonna need money, liquidity to pay them. And in time, if you have less, liquidity you're gonna get more inflation and therefore the price of the asset will decrease or the liquidity will run out right this makes sense so from an inflation perspective this one has it solved through the mint and burn mechanism of the apollo token because when you sell apollo keep in mind that you burn it completely right if we refer back to the original video so you sell apollo you burn it completely you're out so the token is out it's never going to inflate or to be more specific, there's never going to be more Apollo than people 
uh, who would want to mint it, right? Because if everyone sells it, they're going to disappear from the circulating supply and be gone for good. The second problem is sustainability and sustainability through, for example, more liquidity being provided from other sources. And like I mentioned a few moments ago, we have the Launchpad and the DAX that does this for us. But this is not enough, okay? By no means this is enough. We need more because as more obligations arise, you need more liquidity to pay them. Right now it works because you don't have so many users in the platform, 250-ish, I think. But at some point when more users join, if more users join, you need more revenue sources to fill out those obligation gaps. So let's see if this one works out from that perspective. Right now, this is what we got. So this is, for me at least, a small obstacle to uh, surpass. So even though, for example, they can run for a few months up to a year, if they want to keep running for a longer period of time, they need more revenues. So this is one obstacle. The inflation part is fully covered. Hope you stuck around till the end. Now, if you did, it was beneficial, I hope, because I tried to put everything in play, not just explain how this one works, because like I said, from this perspective, it's not really new. What differentiates this one is one, the algorithm of the Apollo token itself, and them tackling the issues that other ROI dApps face, which is cool, right? But still, there are limitations. There's still a lot of things that need to be put in place, more revenues, like I said, more liquidity. So by no means, this is a sure thing. It's still a risk, but from what I'm seeing right now, it's actually a bit better, not gonna lie, right? It's a bit better, but it's still risky. Put your risk capital, again, on the high end, because as I explained earlier, it has a few hints of a miner, so to speak, because at some point, if the TVL runs out, even if the price of Apollo rises, there's no more BUSD to pay out, no more liquidity to pay out, meaning it will stop through facing the sustainability factor. So far it works out. Let's see how we progress from here on out. And with that, have a good one. See you in the next one.